Now let's have the big reveal. What is this very T in question? And it is, hello, Dr. Joe here. So I've got something that I want to share with you guys today, and it has to do with this very T here. This T splits the population right down the middle because it does lower testosterone levels. And that means for some people, this will be a desirable tea to drink. And others, uh, they might want to give it a miss. Okay, they might want to give it a miss because uh, they don't want to bring their testosterone levels down. So I'm going to give you two examples of each scenario. Two examples of where it is desirable to lower your testosterone levels. And also two examples where it is not desirable to bring your testosterone levels down. Okay. And then after that, I'm going to share with you the study that tells us that this tea actually does lower testosterone levels. And after that, I will reveal the tea to you. Okay. So be patient. Uh, it's worth waiting for. So we're going to get started now. And like I said, um, you know, lowering testosterone levels can be something desirable or undesirable. So let's look at the scenarios where it is desirable to lower your testosterone levels. So example number one is in a young woman who's got polycystic ovaries. Okay, she's got polycystic ovarian syndrome. And in these young girls, they tend to have high testosterone levels and that's not a good thing because uh, in a woman if the testosterone levels are too high that will stimulate hair growth in undesirable areas like the upper lip the chin uh, on the abdominal wall the tummy uh, girls don't like that so in this very scenario it will make sense to lower the testosterone levels okay so that's example number one. Let's move on to example number two, and that is in men, okay? A situation where it is desirable to bring the testosterone levels down in men. That would be in a man who's got excessive sex drive. That's not a good thing, okay? If sex drive is excessive, that's not a good thing. And in these men who've got very high testosterone levels, they tend to have extreme mood swings, and that could also lead to enlargement of the prostate. That is to say, you know, the high testosterone levels can lead to prostate enlargement. And it could also lead to acne and oily skin as well. So in this very scenario, in a man, it will make sense to lower the testosterone levels. So that's the second example. Let's move on to examples where uh, it is not desirable to lower your testosterone levels. So we start off with women. And uh, in a woman who is postmenopausal, because her ovaries are no longer producing enough testosterone, it doesn't make sense to bring your testosterone levels down in that scenario because she may end up with low sex drive. She may have issues with memory as well. So in this scenario, it doesn't make sense for the woman to bring her testosterone levels down. So that's example number one. Let's move on to the men. What about the men? In a man's situation where his sex drive is already low, it doesn't make sense to bring the testosterone levels down. And if the man is trying to build muscle and he's struggling to do so, then it still doesn't make sense to reduce the testosterone level. If a man is struggling with motivation for the things he wants to do in his life and he just cannot get motivated, then it doesn't make sense to reduce the testosterone levels then. So, those are the scenarios. Now, what study tells us that this very T does reduce testosterone levels? Let's have a look at the study. It was a randomized controlled study, okay, where they recruited 42 women and they split them up into two groups. They gave one group the actual T and the second group they gave them placebo T. And they were instructed to consume the T twice a day. And the study ran for 30 days. So what else did they do? Well, obviously, uh, they wanted to monitor the testosterone levels. So they checked the testosterone levels on day zero when the study started, on day 15, and also on day 30. So let's move on to their findings. What did they find in this very study? Well, they found that 
in the women who consumed the actual tea compared to the placebo group, there was a reduction in free testosterone levels. The free testosterone is the active metabolite. That's the one that will stimulate, you know, for instance, the hair growth. That's the one that will cause acne. That's the one that will cause the skin to be greasy. That's the one that will cause a woman who's got polycystic ovaries to actually lose hair from the scalp because high testosterone levels tend to cause hair thinning as well. So there was a reduction in the free testosterone and there was also a reduction in the total testosterone levels too. The total testosterone includes both the free testosterone as well as uh, the testosterone that is bound to the carrier protein. So the sum total of that was also reduced. So this will be considered something good for somebody who wants to bring their levels down. And obviously if you're struggling uh, with your uh, testosterone levels already, as in they're already low, you don't want to be consuming this very tea because it's just going to crash it even further for you. So that's the study. Now let's have the big reveal. What is this very tea in question? And it is peppermint tea, okay? Peppermint tea. That's what it is. Uh, now, in the study that I'm going to be sharing with you shortly, they used spearmint tea. It doesn't matter. I've looked at further studies. Both the peppermint tea as well as the spearmint tea, they work, okay? So, nothing to worry about. You can consume either and you will be fine. So, let me share the study with you. Uh, where is it? Uh, here we go. This is the very study and it was published in Phytotherapy Research Journal with the title Spearmint Herbal Tea Has Significant Anti-Androgen Effects in Polycystic Ovarian Syndrome, a Randomized Control Trial. So obviously in this very study, they used the spearmint tea, but like I said before, you can also use the peppermint tea because the peppermint tea has also been studied too. So, uh, there you go. You know, like I said earlier on in the presentation, this very tea splits the population right down the middle. There are people for whom this tea will be beneficial. And there are also people for whom this tea will be uh, something not to touch or something to avoid or something to reduce your consumption of, okay? So, uh, you don't want to consume it if uh, you are already having low testosterone levels, but obviously if yours are high, then it will be a good thing for you to consume the tea. You know, as we get older, men and women, um, for a lot of people, their sex drive tends to plummet. And uh, for the most part, we tend to attribute the loss of libido to the aging process. Now, is it possible, okay, is it possible that some of the foods that we eat may be contributing to the problem. What I said in this very video now should give you some food for thought, okay? Anyway, I'm hoping that you got some value from this very video. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. Please like the video and also please share this video with your friends, with your family, with your colleagues. You got any questions regarding peppermint tea, spearmint tea, uh, that I talked about in this very video, go ahead, leave your questions or comments down below. I think that's about it for this very video. Until next time, well, this is Dr. Joe signing out.